Welcome to Let's Make a Game Platformer, episode 38. In last episode, I've showed you how to uh, create a signal relay that is an entity that, uh, that receives a an, an signal on some channel and then sends the signal on a different channel with a delay, either sends or stops sending with a delay. In this episode, uh, for the purpose of this episode, today I've created this level, which contains the door here with a signal indicator associated with the same channel. And, well, you might think that there's no way of actually opening this door. However, there's this lever object here, lever entity. I've created a, a model for it in a blender. And also I've created already a prefab for it, just to like save some time. So first of all, just to go through this prefab quickly, it's going to be rendered. It's rendered using the G3D model. Here's the path to it. Uh, this is the two things I've added. So the thing that I've added is the translation. You can now in the G3D model component specify translation in addition to scale as before. That allows us to make it much easier to define the level, the position of the lever. I don't have to like tweak those numbers to get get it where I want it to, and where I want it to like at the front of the in front of the player when it's on the same block. And also specifying the scale here. I also specifying the rotation. That's how I want it to be rotated by default. And I've made it so that it sends signal. At the moment, it doesn't send signal because there's nothing that actually activates it. Uh, but in the future, so I can put here a signal producer component. It sends open door. This is the level that I've edited. It sends an open door signal and both door and the indicator receive it. Uh, so first things first, um, let me fix something that I've done last time. Well, it was, I think, two episodes before. So the animation for walking was actually done in the rendering system. Uh, that's not a very good place for it because, well, for example, the lever will not have nothing to do with walking. So what I'd like to do here instead is I have a method here, play animation animation um, event so I want to specify here animation name uh, what else can we pass we can pass the transition time and speed speed multiplier and transition time. So I'll create a constructor with these parameters and get this for it. So now the, the system, instead of doing reacting to model walks and so on, will react to the play animation event on something that has the G3D animation component. And everything else is going to be pretty much the same, except the source for the data. Let me think for a second. Actually, it has to just be G3D model component. Okay, this will have only this information. So instead of walk animation, we'll have event get animation name. So this is the animation you want to play. And in here we'll get animation speed multiplier. And last time, last thing here. Get not animation. 
transition. So let's make it event get transition time. Okay, so this is a generic general purpose uh, event that will allow me to play an animation on the the model that has this on the entity that has the specific uh, the specific component. And now I'll move this part to a separate here. I'll create a package movement here and I'll create a new class G3D model movement component and G3D model movement system. I'll register. And I'll, cre I'll create those events here. For the time being, it doesn't compile, but I want to want to work on this one first. So before our model animation had these methods that defined movement, the idle and walk animations. This is not where it belongs. This is like not supposed to, not supposed to be here. Instead, we'll have this in the Instead, we will have this in this component, which is responsible for movement specifically. And this class now will get the movement component. So whenever an entity that has the movement component is told to be being idle or walking, it will actually fire an event, play animation, specifying that movement get uh, walk animation, movement get walk animation speed and transition. We're going to fix it for now here. It's going to be fixed. And the same is going to be for idle. idle animation speed. So once again, to reiterate, I did this change because I want to have the whole idea of turning on animations on the models separate from what actually the animations are. So the walking before this class was knowing about walking and idling and so on. And it doesn't really have to. There should be a separate uh, system that knows about, okay, when something is walking, we should be activating a uh, the walk animation that is defined by this component. I have to now modify the player player component to uh, provide these here. So we are basically moving this part here. So we're saying that this model is actually animated and one, some of the animations it has is based on movement. And whenever it idles, you want to run this. Whenever it works, you want to run this. Okay, so now make, make, let's make sure that it's still working. Okay, the animation is still working. So we have movement separate from the uh, whole animation concept. Okay, so now let's get into the work on the lever. So first thing, things we want to do is uh, I'd like to color the base of the lever. If you take a look at the lever once again, the lever has this base, which at the moment is white, and it has this, um, the moving part here. I'd like the base of the lever also use the same color. So basically for the same purpose, you, you'll be able to see, okay, this is a lever that turns on a blue, in this case, blue or at the moment white kind of signal. Okay, so I'd like what I'd like to do is create here a new component in the G3D, it's going to be G3D model color component. Where I will define, first of all, material ID and color. So red, green and blue. 
as we had before using ints. Okay, um, I'll make sure that the lever has this component. Model color component. And the name of the material, the ID of the material for lever is actually, well, you can have to trust me here, material ID, it's called base, with capital B. If you take a look here, this is the JSON file for the model. This is the base and lever materials, and I want to modify the base one. Okay, so the way I modify it here is in the in the level I want to override these values so I'll have this component and I want to have red green and blue being the same as well red green blue okay so we have this this and now I have to make sure that the rendering system checks if the material has so if the entity ref get component g3g model color component so if it has the color defined then from the result i do get material passing the id and material set color attribute create fuse and i have to pass rgb values so color get red divided by 255 color get green 255 color get blue 255 and finally one for alpha okay let me run this okay and now as you can see the lever has a blue base which is mass matching the color of the indic and the signal indicator so now we know that this lever actually is responsible for this door all right so we got this thing out of the way now the other thing i have to do is to be able to uh, switch the lever so the, the way to switch the lever the effects i want to have is first of all to send the signal second of all to animate the lever to switch to the other position uh, and well that's it so let's let's split into and um, i'm oh, sorry and activate the lever so uh, let's start with activating the lever so um, normally this would be happening in the keyboard system right we will have a check that specific key is being pressed and if it is being pressed we activate whatever is in the range of the player so let's do this first here um, so i'll create here so this is keyboard basically movement system keyboard control system let me rename this and I'll have a different one here, keyboard activate system. So this is a system that's going to be responsible for activating things, things that are activated by the player. So I'll register system, have it being profiles gameplay. And now question is, how do we receive events about the uh, so because we don't want to do that like in the control system that we activate whenever the uh, button is pressed because it's going to be pressed all the time like i will press it and it might be called three times and i want to switch the lever or not so i want to only receive an event that key was pressed so at the moment when it was pressed and so to, so to do this i cannot just query whether this button is down because it's going to be down for multiple frames instead i have to send input processor so um, let me so this is the name of the profile I have to activate here in the gameplay context 
So we have this input processor. And here, when we have uh, gameplay's context here, instead of sending the all the events to the UI, I have to do gameplay context get system input processor. And I want to input event queue set processor. In the process, I want to send all the events that we've accumulated between frames. And finally, I want to drain it. And in here, instead of passing the input event queue, I'll just call process UI without parameters, which is just doing processing without processing the events. So uh, what this input processor here, the implementation of it, uh, it's going to be event. What it does, it's if there is a UI processor available, it sends all the events to, to there. If they are not accepted or there is no UI processor, it create sends events on an entity specifying the events that are being the events that have happened. For example, key down, key up, and so on. So uh, the thing that we are interested here here in is receiving an event. Key pressed, or is it key down? Key down, I think. Yeah. So we are in, we want to receive information when the key was placed down, and the same way as we had control system here, we'll have this array here of what actually is activating. Let's go with. Uh, right shift right so if this, this is when you are using arrow keys and when you're using wasd let's go for e key so if key down equals um maybe let's go copy one of those is Key, left keys, key down, get key code. Let's just rename only those to activate keys and create a method here. So we iterate through keys. If key equal to key code return true so if any one of those is being pressed we want to send an event so i'll send an event here send hmm, player activated i think that's a good name okay so player activated something it has to accept an event So basically this translates, okay, this button is pressed into an event that says stuff has been activated. So for example, in case of different control, we don't have a keyboard. Okay, once again, I have to put here that we have a keyboard. So if we don't have a keyboard, uh, for example, you have on-screen controls like on your phone or tablet, you'll have a button for activating stuff, and then you'll be sending the same event. And that way you don't have to bind yourself to uh, have separate code for activating on a activating whatever you want to activate on handset device compared to like the keyboard here so we have the part that is activating for keyboard here part that can be activating for on screen controls somewhere else which might be very simple code and the, the all the other stuff is going to be common between all of them Okay, so let me create here a package quickly because this is growing. I want I like splitting stuff. So we have keyboard, and we'll have these two.
Okay, so we have this stuff. So now we can, pressing E, this event is going to be activated. So now let's do logic. We are in logic, okay. And let's do activate. And in here, let's do hitbox activate. component. So something that's going to activate an entity if hitbox is overwritten. Uh, hitbox is uh, over, uh, overlapping. Extends component. Hitbox activate system just a system profiles gameplay okay so in here we'll be receiving the player activated event and out in here, iterate over, so I'll have here inject an entity manager. Because it's gonna be having rarely, I don't have to do it with an index. I'll just go very quickly, get entities with component, player component, So this and hitbox hmm. what was the name of it? Rectangle hitbox component. And location. Okay, so we'll have these things and I will extract them for, so I'll extract the rectangle hitbox. And I will extract the location component. I will inject the Uh, hitbox overlap manager and I'll ask for find overlapping entities so I'll create a rectangle 2D from this these two so I have X it's gonna be location get X plus rectangle hitbox get translate x same for y so I basically reconstruct a rectangle around the, the player so the hitbox of the player rectangle hitbox get width rectangle hitbox get height and I'll find all the stuff that has the entity ref return entity ref get has component and I'll create here a new oh no, no I'll use this one so
So uh, I'm reconstructing the player hitbox here with a rectangle. And then I ask the overlap manager for all the entities that are overlapping with this rectangle whenever at the time when the supply has activated something that have the hitbox activate component. And if they have it, I want to send an event activate entity. Uh, so I want to send on this entity, these entities, send an new activate entity event. So I'll tell them, okay, you have been activated. Okay, so now let's get back to our lever. So first of all, it has to have a hitbox. So uh, it's going to be a rectangle hitbox component. And it's going to have a translate x minus 0, 3. Or actually, no, it's going to be 0 0.2, let's say. Translate y no, because it's going to be 0. It's going to have a width of 0. Point, actually, I'll do 0 0.1, 8, and the height. One. Okay, so this is going to be the hitbox, and it has to have components saying that it's it's actually responding to hitbox activate component. Okay, so now we've got this part. Now what I want to do is. Um, What I want to do is to have a in the signal package have a switch signal on activate component. So this is going to be component for those entities that will switch their signal, producing signal whenever they are being activated. This like sounds very complicated. I um, hope I make some some kind of sense here. So this is what we want to have the, the lever to have. So this basically says, okay, it's going to be receiving the the, the event that's going to be that has been activated, and now we are saying that uh, if it's activated in here, switch signal on activate system. Register system dot else gameplay. So what I want to do is that even entity that has activate entity activate if an entity is called on an if an activate entity event is called on an entity that has the switch signal on activate uh, component and signal producer I want to switch the signal so I'll use the uh, inject signal manager I will have to probably add is producing entity ref so I'll have to add this new method to be here to be boolean but it's gonna be very simple so we do get component signal producer and is producing signal. Normally I could ask ask it in uh, the assist signal here because I have the producer here. Can I check this? But I don't want to do it. So 
let's let's pass this information to the manager. If signal manager, if it's producing, then we want to stop producing. So signal manager, signal deactivated. Else signal manager, signal activated. Okay, so these are all the parts for activating and sending signals. So let's check that it actually works. So I'll activate it and it, maybe you can hear me clicking the button. It actually works. So the only thing that's left is the switching the switching of the lever here. So how would we do this? Okay, I'll create here a new package in the G3D, which is going to be the, the same level as the movement, saying activate, because we'll be modifying the animations here as well, playing the animations. So I'll have new class G3D model activate, mm, activate component. extend component also it will be an interface of course as every component is and in here I'll have a value which specifies that it will be activated and we'll have two getters here activate animation and deactivate animation so this basically is about switching based on activation so it's something that has two states and we're going to be switching back and forth between them okay so let me now create here a system for a j3d model activate system and register it um profiles gameplay and I want to receive an event activate entity on something that has the g3d model activate component so something that basically says Whenever, it, whenever I'm being activated or deactivated, so I'll switch between two states, I want to play some animations. So what we don't want to do here is G3D model activate is activated. If activated, we want to switch it to the opposite value. G3D model set activated, not activated. Okay, maybe this has to be common to both things and g3d model activate oh, sorry entity ref save changes okay so we want to switch the state back to where it was and on the entity if it's been if it's active so it's going to be deactivated we want to send an event play animation g3d model activate get deactivate animation with a multiplier of 1f Maybe I'll specify here an animation speed as well. Don't get any anim activate animation speed. And don't get deactivate animation speed. I specify defaults for them. So by default, it's going to be not normal speed. That's created inside of the model itself so we want to pass g3d model get deactivate animation speed with 0.1 transition sure why not f and when it's when it when it was not active and becomes active we want to activate it play the activate animation with the activate speed okay now i have to modify this lever to specify that it has animations whenever it becomes active or inactive. So 
So the values that I want to pass to it is active activate animation, deactivate animation. Uh, activate animation. I want to have deactivate animation. I'll pass the speeds because they're gonna be by default one, which is fine. And the name of the animation, if you take a look at the file here, is armature turn off and armature turn on. So that's awesome. So for this is gonna be turn off, for this is gonna be turn on. Let's run it and see if it actually worked. Okay, this did not work. Uh, let's set a let me debug it quickly. Okay, so the problem is that the lever does not have this information that is being animated at all. Okay, that holds the state of the animation. So let me try to run it again. Okay, we have stuff happening. Uh, unfortunately, it's looping. So this is another thing I have to probably add to the play animation event, whether it should be looping. Or maybe not looping. Uh, so the thing we have here is the, it's called loop count. So I'll create here a two. Oh, like this one constructed here. So we have to specify how many times the animation should be played. Okay, and in the random system here, I'll do event get loop count. And let me make find where it's being used here. So in case of in here we want to run it only once, in here once, and the movement we want to run it infinitely, so we pass any negative value, minus one for example. Okay, let me run it again. Okay, it seems the animations are flipped, actually. I want it to be the other way around. So let me just change the names here. Off and on. This should probably work correctly now. Okay. So I can now flip lever. When I'm further away, it doesn't work. When I get closer and overlap with this, it actually flips it. Okay, uh, so another thing I'd like to add is a sound. I don't know that it's awesome sound. Well, awesome. Uh, once again, from the same Open Game Art uh, website. So I'd like to play, add a new. Um, new effect here. Let me create logic, maybe no, logic package audio. And in here I'll do play mm, sound on activate component. Sense component. get sound. Okay, so I'll have it quick, very quickly over here, play sound on activate system. Let me say system, profiles, gameplay. I'll, I'll need the audio manager here. And I'll have to receive an event. So whenever Entity is activated. Uh, 
and that entity has a place sound on activate component, I want to play the sound. So I'm going to get the sound. And here I'll create a map to not load it multiple times. So string to sound. Play uh, sounds hash map get sound play sound on activate get sound. This is gonna return sound. I'll create this method here. So what we'll do is do sounds get sound. Result if result equals null. I need to load it. So let's go back to coi keyboard cons keyboard control system. We we'll figure out how we load stuff. That is how we load stuff. Which reminds me I have to refactor this as well too. Hello, some cool stuff there. So result passing here the I'm not passing this. Yes, yeah, sound. And I want to place it in a map. And finally return the result. So if I do this, I want to audio manager, play sound. And now I'll modify the lever to have this component. So I'll do it just after activate. So if it's being activated, this entity is being activated, I want it to play a sound. And the uh, sound is audio slash turn stove, yes, stove, on underscore zero one OGG. Okay, so let me play this. Okay. Okay, you have a sound that switches lever. Awesome. Okay, uh, that's it for this episode. Make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.